Hello, in this tutorial we're going to explain how to use the fluting toolpath options available in VCarve Pro and Aspire. Let's start by creating a, a new project. So we'll make a, in this project we're going to design and toolpath a, a fluted column. So this could be for a mantle or a fireplace or a piece of furniture. We'll make the blank 36 inches by 6 inches, 3 quarter inch thick material, Z0 on the surface and the X0, Y0 origin in the bottom left hand corner. Click OK. There's our blank piece of wood. Next I'm going to use the polyline tool. So draw polyline. And I'm going to enter a position for the start of the polyline. Or we could just click in the two dimensional view with the left mouse button. I'm going to start at an X dimension of 4 inches with a Y dimension of 1.5. Click the add button. Move the cursor in the 2D view and you'll see that it's now locked the start point at X4, Y1.5. Now we could enter another point, the dimensions for a, or the coordinates for the next points, or literally drag the cursor in the two dimensional view. You'll see that the, the, the length of the line and the angle of the line is being displayed. So let's say we want this line to be 27 inches long, horizontal, so an angle of zero. If I click, it's entered that it's snapped to that point. If I now right click with the mouse button, it will, it will close the pol create polyline form and leave my line there that's 27 inches long. You'll see along the bottom of the, the interface it says the width or the length of the line is 27. Next I'm going to take some copies of this. So I'm going to use the block copy functionality. It's telling me the length of the selected objects is 27 inches and I want four rows and one column. So we're going to copy this so we have four, uh, four, four lines drawn in the two-dimensional view and we want a gap between each of the lines in the y-axis of one inch. If I say copy, close the form, you'll now see that we've got the four separate vector lines drawn in the two-dimensional view. Now we're ready to actually apply a toolpath to these lines. So I'm going to swap from the drawing tab on the left to the toolpath tab on the right by clicking the, the option to switch to toolpath tab. Toolpath tab opens on the right hand side of the interface. Just check our material again and retract clearance gap of 0.1 of an inch and 0.75 inch thick material. Click and drag to select the lines. Now we're going to use the, the fluting tool. So this is the and the second row of, of toolpath options. So create a fluting toolpath. Here the little uh, green blocks indicate the start of the toolpath. I'm going to tell the software that we're going to engrave, sorry, we're going to carve these flutes quarter of an inch deep, so 0.25 of an inch deep. Let's select the, the ball nose that we're going to use. So select the ball nose from our database. Here we've got a, a quarter inch ball nose. Now that's not big enough for the project that I've got in mind. I'd like to use a half inch ball nose. So to do that, I'm with this tool selected, I'm just going to say copy. So this is create a copy of the, of the uh, quarter inch ball nose. Here I'm going to change the diameter to be half an inch, so 0.5, we'll change the name to be half an inch diameter as well, change the pass depth and the, the cutting feeds and speeds to suit the cutter and the machine and the material being cut. Let's say we, here we've got a pass depth of a quarter of an inch, so it'll do the fluting in a single pass and apply. So now in our list we've got a quarter, an eighth and a half inch tool. If we want the half inch to be at the top of the list, I can literally click on the quarter inch and drag that down to move it below. So clicking in the tool database, we can drag the tools around. So we can we can say, okay, we want to start with the eighth inch. So click and drag the half inch tool to the bottom of the list. Like so. So we've got the eighth, the quarter, and the half inch cutter. Select the eight, the half inch diameter cutter, so half inch tool. Now, here we've got some different fluting options, so we could ramp over the entire length, so starting at, uh, at the start depth to a depth of a quarter of an inch over the, the entire length of the, the, uh, the selected lines, or we could ramp just at the start down to a depth, or we could ramp in and ramp out. So let's say we're going to ramp over a length, let's say we're going to uh, ramp over an in initial length of the first two inches, so it'll ramp 
gradually plunging into the material over a distance of two inches till it's quarter of an inch deep then it will be parallel at a depth of quarter of an inch and then it will ramp out at the ends we've also got the option to have a linear or a smooth ramp we'll use a smooth ramp option here and say calculate software is now open the three-dimensional view let's just say view taller views horizontal hor horizontally so we can see the 3d view in the bottom and the two-dimensional data in the top window with the toolpath selected we can preview this toolpath and you'll see now that's the result of the fluting operation so if we look at the start of the line the tool is ramping in or it's plunging into the material over a distance of the first two inches then it will cut at constant depth of quarter of an inch and then at the opposite end I'm using the holding the left and the right mouse buttons together to pan in the two dimension in the 3d view when it gets to within two inches of the end it will then start to ramp out of the material so just to look at that again we've used the option to ramp into a depth of a quarter of an inch half an inch diameter cutter and we've ramped over a length of two inches we could ramp over a percentage of the length of the lines and we could also have instead of having a smooth curve we could have a linear um, angular ramp into the material let's move on and look at a, an alternative application for for the using the fluting toolpath so far close we're not going to save this for the moment let's look at a, a project here that we've got set up this has been drawn using uh, using vcar pro or aspire here we've got some some vectors laid out this is a cutting board where we want to machine some grooves in the board it could be a, a a cutting board into solid surface such as Corian um, we're going to cut grooves into the board that gradually ramp from the left hand side down into this pocket area or drainage area on the right so we're going to ramp from this point down to the center of this uh, pocket area and we're going to do the same with each of these uh, these horizontal lines so if we now swap from the drawing tab on the left to the toolpath tab on the right Again, we're going to open the fluting toolpath form, specify the depth that we wish to, to cut to. So let's say we're going to cut to a depth of a quarter of an inch again. We'll use the same half inch bore nose. Now, if we select all of these lines, so click and drag to select. So we're going to ramp down and around. And we're going to start at this end. Notice that the, the green nodes indicate the start point. So if we've got one of these lines with the start point at the opposite end, let's do that. So if we select one, right hand mouse button, sorry, we say end to node edit, place the cursor over this end. We can say make this the start point. So now if we select the different vectors, you'll see we've got a start point in the, at the wrong end of the line. We really want them all to be starting at the left, ramping into the material to the right. If I say Control Z, that will put that back. You'll see that the green node has jumped to the left hand side. So now we're going to select the vectors again. We'll use uh, a depth of a quarter of an inch. We're going to use the linear ramp. So we're going to ramp over the complete length with a smooth ramp sorry we'll use the linear ramp here I'm going to drop the tool into the material at the surface at the start here so instead of just starting at Z0 let's start at say 50 thousandths into the surface if we calculate the toolpath the software has now calculated the fluting toolpaths if we preview these so preview toolpath there you go so it's it's ramping from this right hand side the, the outer grooves are ramping down 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 to a depth of a quarter of an inch and it's doing the same on the on the underside here and it, it's going from left to right go, getting to a depth although we and something too important to notice here we've said it's going to a flute depth of a quarter of an inch but we've all also told it to start 50 thousandths deep so the real depth is 0.3 of an inch if we place if we zoom in here <clears throat> if we place the cursor over the over the end of one of these fluted grooves down in the bottom right hand corner you'll see that it's printing the x the y and the z depth and in that groove there it's 
we put it if we get it if we can get it just at the bottom of the the tip it's 0.293 so it's really point point three inch of an inch deep there and you'll see the same same there so as I move this around it's getting deeper and shallower so there's our, our fluting toolpaths we can go back to the two-dimensional view close the form for a moment let's say we're going to create a toolpath to pocket this area out if we say pocketing and we could use a an end mill to pocket the, the, the area out but we're going to end up then with a square corner at the bottom here and I'd like to have a blended radius equal to the the radius of the cutter that we the half inch radius we used to do the fluting so what I'm going to do is say okay let's select our ball nose cutter so we'll use the half inch ball nose again but we'll use an end mill to get rid of the stock because we don't want to use the rounded tip of the cutter to be machining the flat areas so I'm going to say use a, a larger area clearance cutter so select for that we're going to use half inch end mill and we want the software to actually skim the outer edge using the ball nose and just skim off say 20 thousandths so we'll have an allowance there of 20 thousandths calculate the tool bath and you'll see that we've got two tool baths there we've got the the pocket tool path for the half inch end mill so this is cutting out with the half inch end mill and you can see there although we've told it to go quarter of an inch deep because the, these grooves are really 0.25 plus the start depth of 0 0.05 it's not cleaned up the base of the pocket so if we double click to edit this tool path let's say we really need it to go 0.3 deep and calculate again so the pocket preview this tool path that's cleaning up to the base and then select the half inch ball nose cutter preview that tool path and that would just whiz around the outside and just tidy up the uh, the outer edge of our pocket to the depth that we specified so there we've used the fluting tool path to ramp the cutter into the material into this drainage pocket to the right hand side of the of the cutting board let's move on and, and look at another example where the the fluting is can be used so farm close not going to save these tool baths or any of the project let's look at a, a file that we've that we've already drawn using the software this is a, a decorative leaf pattern where here if we use the node editing tool we've got some very very simple curves very simple bezier curves for a leaf pattern now we could just uh, engrave these lines using the tip of the cutter at a constant depth but the results might be a little bit bland so we can use the fluting toolpath if we again we swap from the drawing tab to the toolpath tab check our material setup and say we're going to use half inch thick material a retract height of say 0.1 of an inch and 0.1 of an inch and half an inch at the end so click OK now if we click and drag to select all of the lines open the fluting toolpath you'll see that the the little green nodes appear indicating the start of the toolpath and so we're going to engrave to a depth of say 0.2 of an inch and we're going to use a v-bit cutter or an engraving cutter so let's just fold up the uh, tool database let's say v-bits let's use a little half inch 90 degree cutter and we could say uh, ramp at the start and the end now we could ramp over a distance or we could ramp over a percentage a distance wouldn't really work in this case because the length of the lines is changing so if we just said a distance if we said the ramp over a distance of half an inch it would look very odd on the very small areas but it may be okay for some of the longer uh, veins on the leaf but if we use a percentage we can say ramp over a distance of say 50 percent so it'll wrap it'll automatically find the center of all of the lines so the center of the short lines it will ramp to the the middle and then ramp out again and let's use a smooth uh, smooth ramp now if we say calculate 3d 3d view opens if we say preview this toolpath that's the result of the of the toolpath that we've just calculated so the cutter is going to ramp in and then ramp out it'll ramp into the depth find halfway and then start to ramp out again that's given us a if we just view 
tall a view for a moment, so view tall horizontal, it's given us a, a, a kind of V-carved effect for the leaf pattern that would have only been possible if we'd drawn closed vectors here. So if we'd if we'd drawn the opposite side to this little vein and created a pocket there, we could have V-carved between that. But that would have taken time and it's not always that easy to draw these things. Being able to select open lines and force the software to to plunge in and plunge out smoothly or linearly can give you some very interesting results on the CNC machine. This sort of pattern can also be applied to 3D uh, fluting. So if we've got a three-dimensional leaf that we wish to engrave some detail into using a spire, we could drop the fluting toolpath or project the fluting toolpath onto an underlying 3D shape to get some very, very interesting results. Uh, so just to summarize, we've we've shown you how to use the, the fluting toolpath, the fluting toolpath to generate uh, tapered or, or ramping toolpaths, fluted toolpaths into a, a a fluted column. And then we looked at the, the chopping board. So take um, machining grooves into the chopping board or or a drainage board it could have been a a shower basin for example for drainage and then we've shown you how to use open lines on a, a very decorative leaf pattern to use the uh, to use the fluting tool pass to create an interesting effect and just to remind you that this toolpath strategy is available in both aspire and vcarve pro i hope you found the tutorial interesting